Howdy! I'm Professor Curtis of Aspire Mountain Academy, here with more statistics homework help. Today, we're going to learn how to use goodness of fit for hypothesis testing of the best day for quality family time. Here's our problem statement. A random sample of 773 subjects was asked to identify the day of the week that is best for quality family time. Consider the claim that the days of the week are selected with a uniform distribution so that all days have the same chance of being selected. The table below shows goodness of fit test results from the claim and data from the study. Test that claim. Okay, the first part of this problem is asking us to determine the null and alternative hypotheses. For goodness of fit testing, that's going to be pretty much the same thing every time. The null hypothesis is going to be that everything is the same. So in this case, all days of the week have an equal chance of being selected. The alternative hypothesis will always be that at least one of those is different. So at least one day of the week has a different chance of being selected. Good job. Identify the test statistic. Well, we work so many of these problems that by the time we get to chapter 11, we're pretty much in the habit of, okay, let's get some data or some numbers, put them in stack crunch, let's stack crunch, choose some numbers, and spit out an answer. But the answer that we're looking for is actually already given to us up here, just below the problem statement. It asks for the test statistic, and so here's our test statistic. There's a number, 3,021.822. So we just put that number here in the blank. Excellent! This next part of the problem is exactly the same thing. It asks to identify the critical value. The critical value is, again, listed up here in the results from some technology display that was already done by somebody, so all we have to do is just copy the number over. Fantastic! And now the last part of the problem asks us to state the conclusion. In this case, we're going to compare the test statistic and the critical value. Well, here's the critical value, which marks the boundary region in the tail of our distribution that is the critical region or the region of rejection. Here's our test statistic. It's well, well within the right, right tail of our distribution. And so therefore, we're going to be inside the region of rejection. And therefore, we reject the null hypothesis. Whenever we reject the null hypothesis, there is sufficient evidence. And so because the null hypothesis says everything's the same and we're rejecting it, we are, by default, quote-unquote, accepting the alternative, which says that at least one of the days are different. So it does not appear that all days have the same chance of being selected. Fantastic! And that's how we do it at Aspire Mountain Academy. Be sure to leave your comments below. Let us know how good a job we did or how we can improve. And if your stats teacher is boring or just doesn't want to help you learn stats, Go to AspireMountainAcademy.com where you can learn more about accessing our lecture videos or provide feedback on what you'd like to see. Thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next video.